Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie and I'm a lead GP from Penrose Health. In this video, we break down the most recent up-to-date NICE guideline in the medical management of type 2 diabetes into six very easy to remember steps. You do not want to miss this. Diabetes is a very common condition in the UK um, where the body is having difficulty controlling blood sugar. Insulin is made in pancreas and it allows the body to take away blood sugar. In type 2 diabetes, the patient either have more resistance to insulin or not enough is being made in the pancreas. Uh, step 1. Once diagnosis of diabetes is made, uh, you may want to consider prescribing a rescue treatment. Um, this is for those patients who uh, have uh, hyperglycemia symptoms, um, such as polyuria and polydipsia. For me, I would prescribe a glucoside 80 mg once daily. Uh, it works by making the pancreas releasing more insulin. Or you may want to consider prescribing insulin itself, having had conversation with the local diabetes team. Uh, I would then want to bring the patient back to see me again in around four weeks. Uh, we plan to um, convert the patient into next steps. Step two. Now, this is where the big change of how we are managing type 2 diabetes is happening. Um, you want to assess the patient's um, cardiorenal comorbidity. And in those patients who are high risk, uh, including those patients with heart failure, cardiovascular disease, uh, stroke, um, peripheral vascular disease, and CKD with ACR of more than 30, you want to offer and discuss about starting a dual treatment early. This is a combination of metformin and SGLT2, uh, such as dapagliflozin 10 mg once daily. Um, you want to start a sequential initiation by starting our good friend uh, metformin first. Metformin works by um, increasing um, tissue sensitivity to insulin, so taking away blood sugar. And you want to review the patient uh, again at uh, four weeks. Uh, we plan to then um, start the um, SGLT2 at that point. Tip on how you initiate a patient on metformin. This is where a lot of clinicians have uh, gone wrong. I always prescribe my patient um, with two tablets, twice a day standard release of metformin, but giving a very clear instruction to the patient to start with one tablet once a day in the first week, then one tablet twice a day in the second week, now the beauty about how we're doing this now is to actually send the patient uh, a text about the instruction to follow. Uh, in some patients who are known to have trouble with the GI problem such as IBS, you can actually go ahead and start the patient on the modify release um, format of medication. Uh, it is also quite useful in those patients who you know is going to be non-compliant. It is uh, an easier way to convince the patient to be on medication um, by telling them that it's just two tablets once a day. There uh, are very few scenarios where metformin is not suitable medication option. Uh, this is mainly to do with the renal function. If the EGFR is less than 30, it is not recommended. If it is uh, between 30 and 45, you want to reduce the dose to maximum one gram per day. Now, in the next video, we will talk a little bit more about sick day rule regarding medication. You also need to be aware that um, different SGLT2 is licensed to work at different renal function. My go-to tend to be dapagliflozin because it's licensed to be used um, from EGFR of um, 15 without needing to change um, the dose. So very, very important point, do cardiorenal assessment early and discuss dual therapy and try to complete the dual therapy initiation at four weeks. Step three, you want to do Q-risk. In those patients with Q-risk of more than 10% or those patients with uh, at least one CVD risk factors, uh, such as hypertension, high cholesterol or obesity, or those patients with CKD um, with ACR of more than three, um, you want to consider um, prescribing dual therapy, uh, which is metformin with SGLT2, 
This is because of the um, cardio renal protection of the SGLT2. Um, so I would do this at around three months uh, when I review the patient again. Even if the HbA1c is within target, you still want to consider prescribing that because of the protective nature of the SGLT2. Now, step four, the rest of the patient with a um, Q risk of less than 10%, you can go ahead with just a single um, treatment of metformin only. Step five, treatment escalation and intensification. Uh, in this video, I am not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the target, but I will do so in the future video. Um, there are two numbers that you will need to remember, 58 and 69. Um, 69 target is reserved for those who are very frail, um, and 58 is for the rest of diabetic um, patient. Now, if the patient is not already on SGLT2 with metformin, please go ahead and give that combination. Now, need to be aware that um, the SGLT2 um, is losing, is lowering um, glycemic effect uh, with each of our of below 45, but it still retain that kind of cardiorenal protection. So you really want to continue the patient on them if they can. Now, with intensification, we've got a range of medications available. Uh, let's start with um, our old friend glycoside. As I mentioned before, it works by uh, making the pancreas releasing more insulin. So it's got its own risk, um, which is making the patient put on more weight, uh, also have this own kind of hypo side effects. So you may not want to consider this medication in those patients who are career driver, who is very frail, elderly, housebound, um, and those patients with BMI, which is very high, especially in those more than 35 BMI. You also need to remember to reduce the dose of glycoside um, when you're using glycoside in combination with other uh, medication apart from metformin. It is also not recommended um, when the patient is on insulin and their EGFR is below 45. Um, next, uh, DPP4, the gliptin. Okay, um, the beauty about the gliptins are is it can be used in those patients who are frail, housebound, elderly, um, with um, renal failure. I tend to go for linagliptin 5 milligram because you don't have to worry about changing the dose with um, any renal impairment. Uh, you've got to be careful in a couple of scenarios. So one, those patients with history of pancreatitis and also those patients who is being put on GLP-1, so you should not be on those combination. Next, pioglitazone. Now, this particular drug has had uh, a very bad press but is coming back. Um, you can start the patient um, from 15 milligram up to 45 milligram. It can make the patient put on weight. Uh, there are a few scenarios where you do not want to use um, pioglitazone. So those patients who um, have history of heart failure or those with a uh, history of bladder cancer or hematuria, um, but you can use pyoclitazone in those patients with renal failure. Step six, and finally, GLP-1. Uh, locally, um, this is reserved um, for those patients um, who are on triple therapy um, with BMI of uh, more than 35 or BMI more than 30 who is ethnic, and in those patients where insulin um, is not an option, the beauty of GLP-1 is it can be used um, weekly. It also makes the patient uh, lose weight. So you may get patient um, who are not actually diabetic, who uh, heard about GLP-1, such as semaglutide, and would like to be started. Unfortunately, currently, it's only reserved for tier 3 weight management only. In summary, six key things to remember. One, consider offering a rescue treatment in those patients who have hyperglycemia symptoms. Two, Offer dual therapy early on for those patients um, with cardiorenal comorbidity. Three, consider dual therapy for those patients um, with Q risk more than 10 and those with at least one um, risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Four, don't forget to um, offer information about SGLT2, the side effects and the DKA risk. Five, 
avoid glycoside in those patients who are frail, elderly, housebound, those with BMI of more than 35, uh, and those who are a career driver. And finally, six, refer those patients for GLP-1 if not achieving the target on triple therapy or in high risk group or needing to lose weight. Uh, thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe or like or leave me a comment and until next time.